Good evening and welcome to the first of two Inside Government shows for the spring 2020 semester here at Syracuse Community College that we'll have tonight. Uh, these are shows that are broadcast on Spectrum, Verizon, Fios, Job, and Regional Media Access, better known as ARMA, and the college's uh, radio station 89.1. I'm your host, Guy Cosentino. Uh, three weeks from today, the New York State Legislature should be voting on several budget bills that, that will fund schools for the 2021 uh, fiscal year that kicks off on April 1st for the state. They will likely be compromise bills that are based on what Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, proposed in January when he sent the legislature a proposed budget. Since then, all types of groups have been meeting with their local members of the Assembly and Senate, whether it's in Albany or locally, cities, counties, uh, not-for-profit schools, towns, and villages. The Auburn Large School District is no different. However, this year they sent a contingent to Albany to advocate for major changes in what Auburn gets annually. We have with us in the studio both the Superintendent of Schools, Jeff Carazzola, who was here, yes, two weeks ago, and Board Chair Kathy Rhodes, uh, who went to Albany with a group of students that included uh, Lucy Noble and Luke Picciano, who uh, recently went to Albany to talk about uh, funding for Auburn. So welcome all four of you. I did say at the beginning that because of there's other things in the news right now, we do need to talk a little bit about uh, a phone message that you sent to all households on Friday. And so we'll be doing the same with Kathleen Cuddy in about 30 minutes. Yes. Uh, what is the district dealing with, or how is it dealing with the coronavirus 19? Again, we're trying to take a proactive approach. Um, we're trying to get out in front of it. So, you know, I wanted to inform the community and especially our, our students and, and parents and staff that we are going to continue to stay ahead of this the best we can. So this weekend we brought in all of our staff to do extra um, disinfecting. So we disinfected all of our buildings on Saturday and Sunday. We have an actual spray machine that we use. We have um, one machine in every one of our buildings. We have three at the high school, two at the junior high, one per elementary building. So we, we disinfected all desktops, doorknobs, computers. And will you do this on a regular basis? We're doing it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay. but we wanted to get a, a good jump on it this weekend. So you've communicated with parents. Uh, I, this was better than the 6 a.m. call that I usually get from you about snow days. Yes, so that's thank correct. you, by the way, yes. on that. <laughs> I made uh, it better timing. <laughs> better time. So you said that people could go to the website. You did give some description uh, online, and you sent out some things. Uh, how else are you communicating with parents? So, so again, I'm going to continue to use the school messenger, um, you know, the robocall, which is me with a, a message, voice message. But we also have the email set, um, piece of uh, school tool as well, or uh, school messenger. Right. So I'll continue to send out messages as we need to, but we're going to continue to keep our website up to date. We have helpful hints, you know, of, of if a child is sick or has a fever, please do not send them to school if they're sick. Um, continuous to wash your hands. Um, soap and water is probably even better than any ty type of sanitizer that they use. Well, the governor it. will sell you sanitizer now. Yes, yes, yes I, I know <laughs> Did he Did you will. get your package yet? <laughs> your box, your box yet? So um, let me ask you about the worst case scenario, and just from the district's mm -hmm. point of view, what happens if you do have to close? Uh, what steps will you take? So I, I met with um, some of our, our cabinet level um, people and a couple of directors last week. Um, so what we're doing is we're planning on worst case scenario how can we teach and how can our, our teachers keep in touch with our students at home? So we're looking at creating some units of lesson um, to be able to deliver online like using um, Google um, or using like Blackboard. So our high school students probably are a little bit more uh, are used to that. That's how college is. Um, I know my, my kids so I know do everything some, online. So one downstate, Westchester, they've closed already and I think they were doing uh, two weeks they were going to close for Correct. two weeks uh, and I don't know if that includes a break or not but around that this is around the time for spring bake uh, the some schools are making a major capital investment in laptops and Chromebooks to send every I think the city of Miami is doing it, I, I'm, which I'm shocked uh, that they can afford to do that correct um, can you do that we're pretty much there already. Okay. We're, we're almost a one-to-one -one complete school district already. So um, most of our students do. But for high school or for all levels? For all levels. Okay. So, so most of our students already have laptops, computers. We can provide any student that does not have one, a Chromebook, a laptop. 
we, we could um, disperse those out to students that need them. The, the real issue is, do they have internet access at home? That was home? my next question. So, so we, you got that digital uh, divide and <coughs> the di digitally challenged. Correct, we do. And, and one nice thing though is um, our community at any time can pull right into our parking lots and they can get free Wi-Fi wi off of our guest list at, around any of our schools. So when we did um, our update to technology, we not only did Wi-Fi in the building, but we did it outside the building as well. So if you're sitting in house, secure systems outside, or is it just open? It's system? it's open to the guests. We're more secure inside than we are open to the guests. So I want to go to the, the virus from a different perspective. If you had to close, you had a large number of. Uh, reduced lunch and mm -hmm. free breakfast and sometimes that's mm -hmm. one of the only solid meals mm -hmm. kids get from a nutrition point of view what are you worried about at this stage I, I, that that's one of our major concerns um, a lot of our students get free breakfast lunch and dinner okay. and even during breaks we provide lunch um, to students uh, at noon over at Genesee Elementary School and that's open to the whole community we do it all summer long as well so if we're not allowed to come into our schools, of course, we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, we would have to look at some form of delivery. We do, we do have a backpack program where we send students home with food for the weekends. Um, from but you're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of children. Right. Yes, right. Uh, yeah, hundreds, few hundred children we do that for. Um, so we would have but to But if you were right. to make it equitable, that as you currently, your current policy is everybody's eligible. At the elementary or schools. the elementary, okay. Yeah, so, so how would we go about that? We would hope we would get some guidance from the state on what we could and couldn't do. My last question is, uh, spring break is in about three <coughs> weeks from now. So are you telling parents, students, you know, about giving any advice on travel? Not where to go, well, well, or but the, to go. Well, and again, right now, traveling to certain countries, um, they're banned anyway, so... I, I don't think many people are going to Italy right now or China. Um, but, but I do think about Little Auburn in four weeks of Myrtle Beach. Correct. Where most of the city right. seems to move to. And, and I'm hoping to get more information. Um, you know, I, I watch a Today Show every morning at 7 o'clock. I turn that right on so I can you get that up to date. I know, getting that up-to-date information. Okay. And, you know, hopefully they'll provide that information for us so we can make a more um, informed decision when that time comes. All right. I just want, I, I think we need to talk about that. We'll be, like I said, we're talking about the WIC program in 30 minutes, but we'll be talking about Corona as well. With, um, and, and just so guy. you know, all of the superintendents, we're planning on meeting um, this Friday morning. Um, hopefully, Kathleen Cuddy will be there. Um, Brian Hartwell and I had a conversation this morning. He's the head of the superintendent. He's, of he's the DS at BOCES, yep. So um, I was hoping that he would be able to reach out to Kathleen so she could join us on Friday morning. Because we want to have She'll the same. She'll be here in a few minutes. You can ask me. Right, right. Yeah, I will. I will when we're leaving. We want to have that same message countywide. Okay. You know, if it's affecting Auburn, it's going to be affecting Port Byron. It's going to be affecting Moravia, and and the college as well. So we want to be unified and making sure that well, we plan together. you start shutting down schools. You you create this massive childcare uh, for every employer. Exactly. That's a whole exactly. nother issue okay. as well. So, uh, <coughs> all right, we'll move on from from there. Where are you in your budget process with your board? <laughs> Well, the bu we have been talking about the budget for the last 17 seven years. <laughs> yes, we have. I, I how, many, how long have you been on the board? Uh, this will be my eighth year. Eighth year, okay. So, so, with that in mind, where are you in the planning stages right well, now? Well, in the planning stages, we are waiting to, we were waiting to get from, from the governor what his budget was going to be for all of us. And then we have to, we sit as a group and we discuss on, on our priorities and what we want for our students and um where we're going to be on the tax cap that's a big a big you know so is it stand you were here I, I, and i jokingly say you were here two weeks ago you were here for a district update uh just remind us of the number you're budgeted right now low what, w what would normally be low so for from the, the two, governor for the two percent tax cap are you referring to no how much are you thinking you're getting state aid wise well right now um in foundation aid it's it's around two hundred thousand dollars we're going to get about another hundred and eighty thousand dollars in community schools he's sort of rolling right that's in. the math twist yeah that and that's about. that rolling in to make it look like we're getting a higher percentage of foundation aid but 
we're only getting a couple hundred thousand now. And what would that is that lower than you normally would get every year? Yeah, it's under two percent. Um, you know, we're we're open when the the budget is given out in April first. Um, we're open to have an increase like we did last year. So you know, we're we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're open to get like an extra five hundred thousand dollars. So the real reason we have you here is to talk to the two of you and also talk to you mm -hmm. as well about uh, uh, <coughs> about a month and a, about a month and a half ago you went to Albany. Mm -hmm. um, who went? Well, it was eighty students that went. These two students right here, they spoke very well and very eloqu eloquently about the budget. And we spoke to uh, Senator Helming. We spoke with Senator Seward, and we also spoke with um, Mr. Finch. Uh, it was, it's a learning experience for the kids because they get, definitely see how politics work. Um, it's they also- They all know that they're in the minority. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's tough for them to make change, okay. Yeah. So uh, you're both in Mr. Moskov's class? Yes. yes. And that's the college level American, uh, history. American history. Uh, so you're in your 102 now semester yet, no? Um, you're in your second, yeah. Sec yeah. second yeah. semester, okay. So uh, did you volunteer for this? Did you get picked for this? We Were you in the wrong yeah. place at the wrong time? <laughs> we volunteered. You yeah. volunteered? Yeah. yeah. So why did you volunteer? Um, well, it, when we learned about everything in the beginning of the year, who was it that came? I'm Ian so Phillips? Yes. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Also a member of the Board of Education yeah. came mm -hmm. to talk yeah. to your class. Yeah, okay. in the beginning of the year, around October. And then Mr. Moskov said that some students would have the opportunity to go to Albany, and he said that he needed speakers too. So I realized that we should be getting our fair share of funding, um, like everyone else in the state does. Yeah. And I figured why not go and try to make a change. So you left when during the day, and when did you get back? Yeah, we left in the morning, and we got back. Mm -hmm. Five? Long trip. So, uh, so when you spoke, who who did you speak to? We kind of, uh, we well, we spoke to um, well first we just spoke to cameras, okay. and then we um, those are always important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not saying anything. <laughs> but they're always important. But, and then we um, me and Lucy we were in the same group, so we talked to Helming. Okay. And I think. Um, Shelly Mayer. Yep. Shelly Mayer. Mayer. I yeah. talked to her. And uh, she was, uh, uh, is she chair of, yeah. of, of yeah, that committee? Of, of the education. Of committee. the education. So that is somebody who can Correct. help make mm -hmm. change. So did you talk about, tell me, what, I'm not going to ask that. What did you talk about? Um, well, we talked about, um, we have everything written down That's here. Okay. <laughs> so right. large class sizes. Mm -hmm. um, classes pushing 30 kids and those are college level classes too so mm -hmm. they should be smaller in order to get the one-on-one -on -one time and less distractions um, another big talking point was after-school activities and if they're like threatened by the lack of funding because um, a few years back they right. threatened to like shut down everything. So did you get into the formula issue or did you just talk about aid to cities like, uh, school districts like Auburn? Just like school districts like us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what do you think about the experience? What did you, what, what did, was your takeaway? I, I didn't think it was really worthwhile to be there. Cause mm -hmm. when we, at first when we were talking, when there was like a bunch more kids that also like volunteered to talk, we were kind of being uh, drowned out because we were on a staircase and there was a group of people above and they were being very loud. And yeah. we kind of just did So you were on the million bail, dollar? Bail reform. Mm -hmm. Bail reform, yeah. okay. Which is another issue for the state, okay. So you say worthwhile just for that particular piece of this versus a one-on-one? -on -one. And the one-on-one, -on -one, I, mm -hmm. I didn't think that was very good either. <laughs> All right, well she, tell us why. Well, okay, so. <laughs> when you say she, is she this was, Senator Mayor? Or? Sen Senator, Senator Mayor, Mayor okay. I think. All right, yeah. yeah. Um, He's most likely so heard this got, a couple of times. I got, um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, but I was, um, Mr. Hurling volunteered me to speak, and so I did. Mr. I'm sorry. So a lot of people who watch this don't know who everybody oh, is. Oh, he's Herling the is. Um, 
ATA president, the okay. teachers union president. Just want to make sure we know yeah. who's, who, who's who. Okay. Yeah, so I had no problem with that, but I didn't really have anything to go off of, so I was just kind of saying what I knew. And it's like she um, was saying, I was telling her our problems, and then she said, well, some schools don't have nurses, yeah. some schools don't have art teachers. I was like, okay, well, we traveled three hours here to talk to you about our school, so you should be taking yeah. our problems into she's account. She's so, go ahead. She's pretty uh, aggressive towards, like, Lucy didn't have really anything prepared and she expected it to, and she was, like, really kind of, really so wanted Lucy is lobbyist. I know we're not supposed to use that word, because you were advocates, because the school right. district right. cannot right. lobby. Right. Right. But did they see you as being there just to make a case and they just had to listen to you because... That's what it seemed like. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting so it. So was this a Tuesday? Was this Tin Cup Day? Did you... Yeah. It was at, yes, it yes, was on So Tuesdays are known as Tin Cup Day where everybody yep. goes to Albany and asks for money. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever goes there and says, I don't give me any. <laughs> so, um, so that was one conversation. How about the other conversations you met? So who else did the two of you meet with? I think I might have just gotten the name wrong. I think we only talked to her. Oh, it was okay. a long time of there moving around the there building. There was a the whole way. Yeah, the groups, the groups did got split up. Split up. Okay. Yeah. So, so I where were you? Which group I, I were? was with, I I did hear a little bit with with Shelly Mara. Okay. I was there. And then, with the, you know, when you're bringing students, students are not always um, prepared for how they're going to get questioned. Right. And I think um, Shelly well, caught the girl, to caught the kid, everybody kind of caught him off guard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was there with Sen with Assemblyman Finch, and um, I think it was difficult because we had to wait for him because he was in another meeting, and so we were waiting to talk to him. And um, he he again, I mean, he was very upfront, and he just said, you know, that he couldn't uh, really help us. So much. I want to get to the nice to piece in a minute, but did you talk to anybody from the administration as well that day? Well, and again, I had the other group, okay. so I met with Senator Seward and Senator Helmy. Okay. Uh, they were fantastic. Yeah. Um, Senator Seward um, is always listening. He only has a little fraction of Wasco, oh, Wasco. Right. Um, but he loved, we, we brought our Wasco students to him. Um, he was so, was, so when you say you brought 80 students, were they all high school students? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, all, right. all high school so students. So no elementary? No, our no elementary no, students. We, we did the same. I got one to volunteer for you. You can take them anytime. So. <laughs> but, um, you know, Senator Seward, Senator Helmy was fantastic. She actually met, met us on the, the million dollar staircase yes. um, while our kids were doing um, their speeches, uh, why they were chanting. Um, Senator Helmy also made a banner for the kids mm -hmm. oh, that we helped. We nice. got pictures taken. I did. I saw, I saw the two little woods young ladies. Yes. That were yeah, there. yes. Yeah, so. and, and if you go to the website, uh, this, uh, the college's website, or college, I'm sorry, the no. district's website, are there photos of? Yes, there, there are. Okay, there so is. if somebody wants to go to the Auburn Large School District, there are some yes, pieces right. from it. And, and I'll tell you, Senator Mayer, though, um, even though she might have given you a, a different perception, she's been very supportive of Auburn. Mm -hmm. I met with her multiple times last year. She might be sick of us because I, I send her a lot of stuff all the time. Um, so it might be, I might be the reason that you got that kind of response, <laughs> um, which is really not surprising at all. But um, she's the one that came out for the first time ever for a center saying, Auburn is on our radar. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, um, she also so represents Yonkers. Yes. yes. So she, she, she did so say she that. has tens and thousands of students that she represents as well so there's a piece of her that's got to protect that mm -hmm. but but she does understand what Auburn's going through and what our needs are so do you th right. do you from a district point of view do you think you've been on a couple of times you think you're making progress do you think you're at a stage this year and again this year is different it was different to start with because it was a large uh, six four four to six mm -hmm. billion right. dollar shortfall because mm -hmm. of right. funding. You now have coronavirus, and I haven't even looked, I looked at the market mm -hmm. this morning, but I haven't looked at it late this afternoon, and most likely don't want well, please to. Please don't. Don't. <laughs> um, so you have a sharp decline in what will be expected to be state revenues. Do you see somebody, uh, a group like Auburn, being able to see the change in the formula this year? I ask that only because on the cusp of that, that means if you don't do it this year, you got two more years before the next election, and then you're in redistricting, 
which is a whole different animal. Right. But I think they, they are starting to at least realize that the formula's got to change. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one So admitting piece. the problem is Admitting there's a problem. Okay. But the other piece is, is we can't stop bringing our case to, to Albany. We can't because if we do, we'll get nothing. And, I, and that's what's going to happen. I mean, we've got to keep this ball rolling. And I know the community's tired of it. Well, no. Are, it is hard. Well, the community's tired about it until you say how much do you think you've lost in the last 10 years. Right. What number is that? It's well over $100 million. Yep. All right. So you only get tired. Right, it, right. Then you're talking about real money. This year's, this year's $6.3 million. Mm -hmm. So uh, where's the administration on this at this stage? Are, are they telling you anything, the Cuomo administration? No, no. And, and again, a lot of times I make phone calls there. I don't get return calls. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's an easy solution. And, and again, it's that hold harmless piece. You know, we've got school districts that continue to get wealthier that are getting more than what they, they're supposed to be in foundation right. aid. While we're $6.3 million underneath that, stop giving those districts more money. You know, keep them flatlined at where they're at and build the equity up because our gap continues to get bigger and bigger every year. Do you think there's a chance of that? No, sure. but but it's a simple, it's, it's, the right it's thing political. To do. Okay. You know, the, the political ramifications that you have downstate. So I asked both of you beforehand what you might be doing. Neither of you, so when I was in the equivalent class with Mr. Martin, many, many years ago <laughs> at the college level, um, I had an interest in government and policy. You are looking to go into math and you are engineering? Yes. Yeah. So you're both juniors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did this turn you off from getting involved in public policy? Mm, a little bit. Okay. I wasn't really like looking to get into it anyway, but this just seems like a very big problem. And I don't know if I'm into dealing with this for a while. Okay. So I just. Okay. No, I love the honesty. I don't know that. So uh, you are a junior. What do you want to do in two years? I'm hoping to just. Or beyond. Go to a four-year school and then just get my degree in like engineering, software okay. engineering, and then just going to work with that instead. Okay. And you think in RIT? Yeah, that, that's what I've wanted to go to for a right. while. You know you're on the college track. You just haven't figured out where you want to go. Yeah. But what do you want to do? Well, I m major in math and I think minor in business. Okay. So there are definitely a lot of job so options. So finance, business side yeah. of the ledger. Okay. Uh, so you also uh, spoke to the head, uh, not the, was it the head or the regional head of NYSA? Both. Okay. The New York State United Teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, was that a different experience? Because that was a round table, correct? Yeah. That was, okay. That was so tell how was that, oh, okay, you're more sorry, enthused. Sorry. <laughs> you're more enthused about that one. So <laughs> tell me how you think about that one went. Well, I think, I think that went well for us never having to deal with that before. And it was like, it was more than what I thought it was going to be. As there was like students that, a lot of students that came over and they watched and I was like, oh my gosh, there's cameras on us and stuff. But um, yeah. uh, it was it was fun. It was good to talk about it, and I thought I thought we did pretty good. Although everybody there seemed like was really nice about mm -hmm. it, and, okay. just and it was fun. very interesting to hear what everyone else around yeah. the table had to say. Definitely. Um, so who was I'm sorry? Who was at that particular roundtable representing? So we had a, we had a, these were our two student reps, okay. uh, Ruth and Lucy, and we had um, the presidents of all of our unions, our okay. bargaining units. Um, we had a couple board members. We had principals, we had teachers, social workers, um, social <laughs> workers yep, we had um, school counselors, mm -hmm. so we had a cross-representation of our district nurses, so, um, you know, we, we tried to get a cross-representation. So what is your hope that NYSE will be able to do here? Again, I, I, I think it's advocating for school districts like Auburn. Um, they were fantastic. Um, we, we did a visitation at Seward. They got to see our large class sizes. We have fifth and sixth grade over at Seward that have anywhere between 28, 29, 30 kids in a classroom. Um, they saw the lack of space. They saw the overcrowdedness. They saw lack of staff members in classrooms. Um, so th I think that gave them a good picture before we actually sat down at the round table. But to hear how every bargaining unit is affected, whether it's our custodial group, our secretarial group, our administrators, 
our teachers, it didn't matter, everybody's affected. Mm -hmm. Uh, not that you and I hang out a lot together, uh, but yesterday you and I were in a meeting and the district was talking about the census. Correct. Uh, and you have some outreach you're going to do. But why is the census, people are going to be receiving their postcards this week if they go online, which will be an interesting exercise for the nation. Uh, but why is the census important from your perspective? Uh, my perspective is, you know, looking at data from 10 years ago in 2010 when it was done, there was about you know, 28% uh, of people that did not fill out but the you, form. But the state is now using 2,000 numbers, well, not 2,000. That, that's, a, that's a whole nother issue. But even if they were using 2010 data, if, if we're losing 28% of federal and state funding because people aren't filling it out, that's a huge issue. We, we really need to push to make sure that everybody is filling out the census data because when they're using the, the, the foundation aid, they're not using 2010 data, they're using the 2000 data because we were an average needs district back in 2000. 2010, we were a high needs district. So the state is using that 2000 data because many school districts went from an average needs to a high needs. So they don't wanna use that data because they'd have to spend billions and billions of dollars more. Do you think that they will be forced to use 2020 data once this gets all done? I, I mean, that's our hope. Okay. That really is our hope. But, but that usually involves litigation. <clears throat> Correct. And, and we just need people to fill it out. Uh, and I know uh, Ass Assistant Superintendent Camille Johnson has got some things she's rolling out. Can you tell us, uh, there are some pockets in the city of Auburn, uh, specifically in the area around the Schweinfurth Art Center and some of yep. our areas, where we have 25 or, or more percent that don't fill out the census 10 years ago. What's the district trying to do and, and get people to fill that so out? So when I first met with Tina, um, one of the, the... This is Tina Hanford, who's the census coordinator. Coordinator, for, yep, for okay. our county. So when I first met with her, I, I thought of some ideas of doing some activity nights at some of our elementary schools, such as Genesee and Casey Park. I met with Camille. Um, Camille uh, ended up getting uh, organizing some people together. I let her run with it. So what we're doing is we're planning on having activity nights where kids can come in, do games with the kids, um, while we set up bank of computers, banks of computers, so that parents can come in and actually fill out the census data and then maybe provide dinner for, for families. So we want to make it a community event, and we can do it at every one of our elementary schools. So uh, where you are in the budget process right now, you're going to continue advocacy for the next three weeks. Do you expect a budget on time? Um, from what we understood, we're, we're hoping. But again, with this coronavirus, don't I know. don't know what's going to be happening. Next week, I was supposed to go advocate uh, with my small city school district. I advocated. So there's still going to be advocacy. Well, and, I advocated uh, last week um, at the legislative buildings with uh, Cato, Port Byron, and Moravia. Um, but I was supposed to go with my small city school district partners next Tuesday. That's been canceled. Um, Albany did do, Due to this? Due to the coronavirus. So that one's canceled. So again, the advocacy is going to have to be through emails. It's going to have to be through phone calls because I don't think there's going to be much contact anymore. And as I always say, we always get one, at least one question for you for every show. Love it. Uh, you have fire departments talk to elementary students about fire safety but you don't necessarily have police officers come in to talk about stopping crime. Okay, well, and, and again, that, that's a great question. And, and I, guess, I guess if you look at that, we do not have police officers that usually do come to our buildings. In a uniform. In a uniform, because that's what our SRO program is, is for. So our SRO programs, I know at the high school, I know they go in and they teach a lot of different topics at the high school and at the junior high. Same thing with our elementary SRO, are supposed to be doing lessons in the classrooms. Again, what makes it a little bit more difficult though with the elementary is we only have one SRO for right. five buildings, mm -hmm. but they do do lessons. But again, they're not in their police uniform. Sometimes when our younger kids look at those police officers coming in our SRO, they see a teacher or an administrator, not actually a police officer. So have you, so for the two of you on social media, have you had presentations on social media, what, what to look out for, what to worry about in your um, years? Yeah, I'd say like a broad, but it's, yeah, I okay. definitely there's stuff on social media about that. Okay. 
Well, we want to wish the two of you good luck with your <laughs> continued studies. Good luck for the rest of this year. Hopefully you get to go to school every day because there's scheduled days uh, <laughs> uh, other than snow day. Snow day may only be. Uh, we'd like to thank Ms. Rhodes, the president of the school board and superintendent of schools, Jeff Carazzola, for giving us this update about your advocacy, and we wish you luck on that. Uh, we'll have you back in about two months with Lisa Green to talk yes. about the proposed budget that you put before mm -hmm. voters in mid-May, correct mm -hmm. on that? Um, but we want to thank all three for talking to us about the uh, district's advocacy uh, efforts. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with another uh, edition of Inside Government, this one with Kathleen uh, Cuddy, uh, Tanya Young, uh, and uh, Stacy uh, Carter, who will be talking about the WIC program. We will also be talking about Coronavirus 19 as well and get an update from the county. We'll be back on Thursday with two Beyond the Front Page shows. Uh, they will uh, be, be updates, one from Nick's Slides, the other one's from the Schweinfurst Memorial Arts Center, who are both recipients of New York State Downtown Revitalization Initiative recipients. This is the DRI program, and we'll talk about what they're doing, what they have planned, including a Nick's Slides fundraiser. Next Tuesday, we'll have our third in a series of extended inside government interviews for the 24th Congressional District. Roger Miso will be here uh, to talk about his campaign and uh, a little bit about his biography and what uh, issues uh, he wants to talk about. We've also offered that a spot to Congressman John Kacko, and we're hoping that he will join us in the studio as well, and we're waiting to hear back from his campaign. By the way, the Media Communications Department here at the college will be presenting their first ever telecom telethon on Wednesday, March 25th from 12 noon to 6 p.m. The telethon will be uh, broadcast live on Spectrum, cable uh, channel 12, as well as live streamed on the college's YouTube uh, channel, uh, Media at Cuga. Uh, performers of all kinds are, are encouraged to uh, participate and are welcome to participate, uh, whether they're musical artists, poets, stand-up comedians, uh, actors and actresses. All proceeds from the telecom telethon will go to the student uh, pantry here, the Cuga Cupboard, uh, which we would encourage you to help uh, raise money for. To sign up to be a performer or participate uh, in the Telecom Telethon, there is a sign-up sheet outside room T128, or you can also uh, email the event organizer, uh, Jenna Fields. I think her uh, email is being popped up on screen. Uh, before we go, though, we would like to remind you you can send your questions or thoughts for guests on Inside Government or Beyond the Front Page to COZGUYTHO at AOL.com or Inside Government 141 Dunning Avenue, Auburn, New York 13021. I'm Guy Cosentiner for Cuyahoga Community College. We want to thank you for watching. I hope you have a good night. Have a great tomorrow. But stick around for a discussion about the WIC program.